Okay, welcome to ProServe 2012 training videos. Uh, this is reports part two. I'm going to pick up on statements here. Aging is actually the last thing I covered, but it's basically the same screen. So I'm just going to move on to statements. And uh, essentially, statements is very similar to aging. Uh, I could tell the program I just want a statement for customers that have a, an invoice that's 30 days old it, it, or 90 days old. And then I can just build that report, build that statement, actually. And let me just show you this. This guy right here has got one that's only 30 days old, but it's on this statement. Okay? So it really didn't fit the 90-day criteria, but because he, this customer had some for 90 days, it simply includes any invoices they have uh, for this statement. But if I turn this exclude no match on, I'm not going to get that invoice that's 30 days old. Because it did not match the 90 day old criteria that I had re had requested. Okay, so that's what that's what this does right here. Here I'm telling the program to exclude email accounts. So if I got customers that are set up, uh, you know, for them to send them a statement with their email, I'm going to try to just pick this guy just to see if maybe I've got a, which I don't. But if this were on and he had an email, then this guy would get skipped. Okay, you follow me? If that's turned on for a customer to email it rather than uh, print it, then it's then uh, that's what this feature is doing here. This feature is telling it don't don't print it if I'm emailing it. Okay. All right. The rest of this is kind of more or less self-explanatory. What what is the considered bill statement terms? Well, let me just show you that real quick. If I go to my terms file and uh, and showed you 30 days, well, this is that switch right there, bill statement, yes on, yes or uh, no. So that's where, where that's coming from. That's where it's coming from. Consider that. In other words, if that's off on that terms for that particular customer, on those invoices, don't print it. Don't include it. Okay? And I could, you know, use the time frame, but normally you wouldn't. Uh, normally you may do this uh, and, so, and so forth. Okay? So that's my statements. Uh, open credit. Where's my payments? Uh, it defaults to today. If you were going, it defaults really to batch number. So as you're posting payments, there's a place there where you can actually uh, increment that batch number. So you could actually have a batch number for each day or each two days or maybe a week. Uh, it really depends on you. And if you if you utilize the batch number, then you can easily at the end of the day go and just print here. And just print that batch. Now I know I don't have a seven yet, but I know I've got sixes, a six. So see, I'm I'm basically just printing that batch, what was posted. But if, even though it included several days here, okay, that's because I never incremented my batch number when I was doing all this. But normally, normally you would increment your batch number so that you can. Uh, Control that. Let me let me show you the batch number, so that we can be on the same page there. I don't want to confuse you. So here's my batch number right here. As I move through the program, and I got to go back to November, but as I move through the program here, once I get past the payment type, 
I have the ability to select new batch number here and it will increment it. So you watch it go to eight. So now I can continue to post this payment and then I can leave it on that batch number all day. So at the end of the day, I can then go to cash receipts or go to this report and print my payments and base it on the batch number. So that's how that works. Uh, open credits, you definitely want to run this. This is going to keep you informed of, of customers that have an open credit uh, that you need to, uh, you know, keep an eye on and apply it out if, if, if you can, you know, to clear it up. Uh, we got invoice ledger. Uh, this allows you basically to do it by a time frame and notice it came up with today's date, assuming that you would print this on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, I'm just going to have, I'm going to set my time frame back to 2017 just, just so I can be sure that I'm going to pick up some, some things here to show you. Okay. So it's, it's going to subtotal on, uh, on user because I told it to. So this is the user that actually posted that work uh, in that time frame. And again, I can click this to just narrow down to the totals and so forth. Okay. I could turn that off and just, you know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't produce a, a subtotal, basically. It also... Uh, tells me, you know, what's still open and what's been paid. So all these are still open. Okay. Uh, that's the invoice ledger. Uh, my print invoice queue. Here I'm telling the program, do not print what's set up to be emailed. Same thing from your customer file. That's where that's coming from. So you could print this. It'll print what has not already been printed. Uh, if it's been printed, then it's uh, it's not going to print again unless you double-click it. See, this one's been printed. So unless I double-click it to tell it to reset it so it'll print again, then I can print and it will include it. Okay? If you double-click it again, then it turns it off. Okay? So that's how that works. Reports, uh, global invoice email, essentially is the same thing, and it's going to email uh, an invoice to any customer that is set up to be emailed, okay? This is really a timer type thing where I can set the time, for example, to... Uh, six o'clock p.m. tonight and really I'm telling the program to just start this process at six o'clock tonight now at this point you would be leaving I mean you'd be turning your monitor off and leaving you're not going to be able to you know to you're not really going to be able to do anything else uh well actually you can but you wouldn't really want to okay you really want you really wouldn't want to start something else. So this is where you would want to leave it so it'll run tonight when you're not at the office. It, you know, so you don't have to sit here and wait on it. Otherwise, it may take it may depending on how many you got going out. It may take uh, ten minutes to it may take forty five minutes. I don't know. It just depends on how many how many invoices you're emailing out. So it's the same thing. We got statements here. Uh, it's basically the same thing with statements. So we're going to email any statements that's due. And uh, unlike the invoice, this will resend the email uh, as you run it. So it's uh, it tells you here, you know, that you're going to run this on a monthly basis. So basically, you wouldn't want to run this every day because you're resending the same statement to that customer every day. Okay. So this is assuming you're going to mail email statements on a monthly basis. And it just basically sends statements out to anybody that owes you money. Which is completely different than the printout. Because the printout lets you, you know, it gives you more options. Where the email, 
the email part of the statement program, it, there's no options whatsoever. I mean, you're just going to click email and it's going to send an email out to anybody that owes you money. That's set up. If the customer's set up to to uh, print, I mean, to email statements, then it goes out. If it doesn't, then it's not going to go out. And where that's coming from is uh, why well, I went into order entry. And again, Real quickly, where that's coming from, I'll just show you from the customer file, and then we'll wrap this video up. Um, profile here, I would have to have this on for it to send an email, and I would also have to have this on. Be sure that's on, because uh, I either print or email. So this has got to be on, and this has got to be on, and there has to be an email account set up before it will actually email that customer a statement. Okay. Well, that concludes this video. There's a few more things, but I think you get the idea. And uh, uh, they're just different options and things. Let me show you one other before I end this, just to give you, just so you can know. These options right here can be seem confusing, but really they're not. That basically means it's active. That means it's both, but I didn't mean to click at all. That means it's both right there. And that means inactive. So these two are defaulted to both. That's what that means. Now, real quickly, I'm going to look at Open Whip and show you something here that seems like it's backwards from what I just showed you. This dot means both, which actually ends up being the first option. But the reason I did that is, is this right here. If you look right here, you see that I'm, I'm obviously, I'm looking at both scheduled and unscheduled work. If I click this, it's off. I'm looking at all off. So these are all unscheduled. And then if I click it again, it means it's on. Now I'm looking at all scheduled. And so that's why this one's slightly different of why both is not in the center. Um, like the others were on the report. So that's really the only one I think that's kind of, seems like it's out of whack. But uh, actually this makes sense in this program where the report over here uh, just simply makes sense the way that I'm doing it here. Active, both, inactive. On, both, which is really not off, but that's inactive, which means it's off. Okay. Well, that concludes this video. I hope it helps. Uh, thanks for watching.